Here we're given an implicit equation and asked to find dy dx, then determine the equation of the tangent line at the point one comma one. We have an implicit equation here because notice how it's not solved for y in terms of x. So the first step is to differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to x. And now when we differentiate with respect to x, if the term only contains x, we differentiate as we normally would, but if it contains y, we have to apply the chain rule and we'd have an extra factor of dy dx. So looking at the left side, we first want to find the derivative of negative 54x to the ninth. So we multiply by nine. Nine times negative 54 is negative 486. We subtract one from the exponent, so that'd be x to the eighth. Plus, now we want to find the derivative of eight x to the thirty-six times y. Because this term contains both x and y, we need to think of this as a product of two functions and apply the product rule. For review, the product rule is given here below. So let's let eight x to the thirty-six be the first function f, and we'll let y be the second function g. And now applying the product rule, we have the first function as it is, so plus eight x to the thirty-six times the derivative of y with respect to x, because this is a y term, we have to apply the chain rule, and therefore we'll have an extra factor of dy dx. So first we find the derivative of y with respect to y, which would be one, and then times the factor of dy dx, which would just give us dy dx. Plus the second function as it is, which is y, times the derivative of the first function, the derivative of eight x to the thirty-six, again this only contains x, so we multiply by thirty-six, thirty-six times eight is equal to two hundred eighty-eight, so we have times two hundred eighty-eight x to the thirty-six minus one is thirty-five, plus the derivative of y to the tenth, again this is a y term, so we have to apply the chain rule, so we first find the derivative with respect to y, then multiply by dy dx, so we'd have ten y to the ninth times dy dx equals the derivative of negative forty-five, which is zero. Now we want to solve this equation for dy dx. Notice how these two terms contain a factor of dy dx, and these two terms don't. So let's move the two terms that don't have a factor of dy dx to the right side. So we'd have eight x to the thirty-sixth dy dx, plus ten y to the ninth times dy dx. And this would be equal to, we'll add four hundred eighty-six x to the eighth to both sides. So we have a positive four hundred eighty-six x to the eighth on the right. And now we'll subtract this term on both sides. So we'd have minus two hundred eighty-eight x to the thirty-fifth y. And now we'll factor out the dy dx, which will leave us with eight x to the thirty-sixth plus ten y to the ninth equals, the right side remains the same, and now we'll divide both sides by the quantity eight x to the thirty-sixth plus ten y to the ninth. Notice how this simplifies to one, and therefore dy dx is equal to four hundred eighty-six x to the eighth minus two hundred eighty-eight x to the thirty-fifth y divided by the quantity eight x to the thirty-sixth plus ten y to the ninth. While this derivative is correct, it does simplify. Notice how all these terms do contain a common factor of two. Let's begin by factoring out two from the numerator and denominator. If I factor out two from the numerator, we'd have two times the quantity two hundred forty-three x to the eighth minus one hundred forty-four x to the thirty-fifth y divided by, factoring out a two from the denominator leaves us with two times the quantity four x to the thirty-sixth plus five y to the ninth. So two over two simplifies to one. This isn't going to simplify any further, though sometimes we may see the numerator factored. So we have dy dx equals two hundred forty-three x to the eighth minus one hundred forty-four x to the thirty-fifth y divided by four x to the thirty-sixth plus five y to the ninth. But we may also see it expressed where the numerator is factored. 
the greatest common factor of the numerator would be 9x to the eighth, which would leave us with 27 minus 16x to the 27th, y. And the denominator would stay the same. We have 4x to the 36th plus 5y to the 9th. So I just want to point out it would not be wrong to leave the derivative in this form here, but if you were looking in the back of a book, it probably would express a derivative in either of these two forms here. Now that we have dy dx, we can find the slope of the tangent line at the point one comma one by evaluating this derivative at this point. So dy dx at the point one comma one is equal to, well if we substitute one for x and one for y, let's use this form of the derivative here. If both x and y are one, the numerator is just going to be 243 minus 144 divided by, our denominator is just going to be four plus five. This is going to give us positive 99 divided by nine, which equals 11. So now we want to find the equation of the line that has a slope of 11 and passes through the point one comma one. And let's do this on the next slide. We are asked to express the equation of the tangent line in slope intercept form, which would be the form y equals mx plus b. So to find the linear equation, we can use this form, or if we wanted to, we could begin with point slope form, which is y minus y one equals m times the quantity x minus x sub one. Either form works. Let's go and just use slope intercept form for this example. So we know the slope is 11, so we know the equation must be in the form of y equals 11x plus b. And now because the point one comma one is on this line, it must satisfy this equation. So now if we substitute one for x and one for y, we can determine b, the vertical intercept or y intercept. We would have one equals 11 times one plus b, or one equals 11 plus b. Subtracting 11 on both sides, we have b equals negative 10. So the equation of our tangent line would be y equals, we know our slope is 11, so 11 x, and now we know the vertical intercept is negative 10, so we have minus 10. And let's just verify we get the same thing if we use point slope form. In point slope form, we'd have the equation y minus y one would be one equals m, which we know is 11, times the quantity x minus x sub one, x sub one is one, so we have y minus one equals distributing, we have 11 x minus 11, adding one to both sides, we get the same equation, y equals 11 x minus 10. I hope you found this helpful.